In the following presentation, I will be explaining the physics behind my mousetrap car. I will begin by first presenting visual evidence that I myself built the car. So here's a picture of me working on it. Here's a picture of me finishing my car. And here's me smiling with the finished product. Energy stored in the mousetrap spring. Because the spring doesn't travel in a straightforward path, um, it travels in an angular path, we have to use the torsion wheel to analyze the car as if it were traveling in a straightforward path. Um, to do this, we found um, changes in the angle of the mousetrap spring and um, the corresponding force exerted by the spring. Um, after doing this, we multiplied each angle by pi, or pi theta to um, change the angular uh, uh, distance into a, uh, an actual distance, if you will. And um, uh, after we did that, we were able to um, plug in the delta x into the elastic energy formula one half um, k which is the spring constant delta x squared and we were able to f uh, uh, find the resulting elastic energy of um, each uh, change of position in the spring and we found that the maximum potential energy of the mousetrap spring is about 0 uh, 0.328 joules after analyzing our car on tracker, um, we were able to obtain this position time graph of the path traveled by our car. Okay, so to find the displacement of the car on its path, we have to look at the velocity time graph. Um, the displacement is the area under the graph of velocity, so I will take the integral of the velocity, f oh, whoops, not the position, but the velocity. I will take the integral of the velocity time graph, which comes out to be 6.23. So the displacement of the mousetrap car is about 6.23 meters. Mass of the mousetrap car. To find the mass of the mousetrap car, I first weighed my car on a force probe and found that it has a weight of 1.54 newtons. Then, to convert it into mass, I divided this weight by the gravitational constant 9.8 meters per second squared and obtained a mass of 0.157 kilograms. Maximum velocity and kinetic energy of the mousetrap car. Um, to begin finding the maximum velocity, we first set the elastic energy of the spring equal to the kinetic energy of the car. Um, we find here that 1 half k delta x squared equals 1 half mv squared and we found previously that the maximum um, elastic energy of the spring is about 3.328 joules and we set this equal to 1 half 0.157 which is the mass of the car times v squared and we solve for v and get that it is about 2.44 meters per second in order to find the maximum kinetic energy, we just use this formula, 1 half mv squared, and plug in mass and the velocity we found here to obtain a energy value of 0.328 joules, which is about the same max as the um, previous elastic energy, and these calculations are under the assumption that no energy is dissipated. So to find the acceleration of the car when it is speeding up and slowing down, we again look at the velocity time graph. Um, in this little seg segment here, or this little time interval, the velocity is increasing as shown by the graph. <clears throat> this is the interval where the car is speeding up. And since acceleration is the slope of velocity, the acceleration at this time is about 0.1346 meters per second squared. When the car is decreasing or speed in speed or slowing down, the velocity time graph is um, decreasing and the slope is negative. 
and the acceleration of the car when it is slowing down is about negative 0.3749 meters per second squared. Force diagram of the car during when it is both speeding up and slowing down. So first we will look at the car when it is speeding up. Um, since the car traveled on a relatively level ground, we will assume that normal force and weight cancel each other out or are equal. Um, and since the car is speeding up, the force of the string pulling the car is greater than the friction of the wheels that are uh, that is acting on the car. Um, similarly, when the car is slowing down, weight and normal force are, have the same value, but instead, um, since it is slowing down, the force of the car, or force of the string that pulls the car, is less than the kinetic friction acting on the car's wheels total force on the car during the time when it is both speeding up and slowing down. So the formula for this is um, the sum of the forces equals ma and to do this we would use the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car when it is speeding up and the acceleration of the car when it is slowing down to find the respective net forces but um, in order to do so, I need a fresh calculator, and since mine ran out of battery, I decided to present an alternative form to do this, or an alternative way. So, in order to do it another way, we would add the vectors of the forces. So here we have normal force, weight, kinetic friction, and um, the force of the string. And after adding all these vectors, we find that this, uh, the net force is this little vector right here. Um, same thing on this side. Here's normal force, weight, except kinetic. Fr uh, this time the force of the string is smaller than the kinetic friction. And here is the net force, um, this time in the negative direction. So here's my template for my VPython simulation. So here I entered my velocity my initial velocity, here I entered my acceleration and here is my deceleration so here is my vpython so here is my energy flow diagram <coughs> the RE screencast the Matic is having um, <coughs> problems adjusting its um, range so I have to move it down but yeah here's the um, <coughs> the energies of each respective um, p point in time okay well now it's starting to work properly again but um, okay so this point is the point where the car is just about to start moving here's the point where the car attains its maximum velocity and here's the point when the car is at a complete stop so here, elastic energy is at its maximum because the spring is fully loaded. Um, here, uh, velocity is at its maximum, and here there's no energy because the car is fully stopped. At this point of time, uh, during the point between um, the car starting and the car going at a maximum speed, there's no energy dissipated. But once the car, um, whoops, uh, once the car goes at a max speed and starts slowing down to the point of stop there is um, some dissipated <coughs> energy due to either friction or air resistance uh, although air resistance is very um, low so we have here um, we just have this little segment here 1 of mv squared minus the e dis equals 0 for no energy and um, when you plug everything in e dis becomes 0.1604 joules.